What is going on guys, DBG here and today we are going to be talking about things in NBA 2K21 my team that make absolutely, absolutely zero sense. Zero sense. Whether it makes no sense from 2K's perspective or it just, I'm just confused about what is going on and why things are the way they are. So, um... Yeah, before we get on to it though, if you guys are new to the channel, subscribe channel, 247,000 subscribers by the end of Friday. Obviously, today is Wednesday, and right now we are actually at over 350, so again, we've hit 150 subs since then, since this um, was taken. Absolutely, absolutely crazy. So, um, we could get to like four or 500 by tonight. That would be insane. But um, anyway, yeah, so... Now we are going to get on to the five things. The first thing that makes absolutely no sense, and there's no like rhyme or reason to this. I can't rant on for a long time about this, but why are the badges not in any sort of order? It makes no sense. Look at this, hard type badges. So you start off with catch and shoot, then corner specialist. So I'm thinking, okay, I know we have Acrobat, so that begins with A, so they're not in alphabetical order. Maybe they're in like alphabetical order based on their like tiers. Then we got difficult shots, okay. Yeah, you know, we got C, C, D shooting badges. Then we got Fearless Finisher, which is a slashing badge. Acrobat, which is a finishing badge. Teardropper, which is a finishing. Brick Wall, which is a defensive badge. I think. Maybe Brick Wall. Then Post Spin Technician, which is a playmaking badge. Drop Stepper, which is an interior finishing badge. Put Back Boss, which is a finishing badge. Anchor Breaker is a playmaking badge. Heat Seeker, I think, is playmaking. Break Starter is definitely playmaking. Lobsy Finisher is um, finishing. Highlight Films finishing. Dimer's playmaking. Pickpockets defense. Rim Protector's defense. Pick Dodger defense. Chase and Ice defense. Defense, 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 defense. And like here, at least we're like a bunch of defense ones in a row. And then we got randomly got Hook Specialist. Posterizer, then off ball pest. We've got a bunch of defensive badges in a row. And then we've got posterizer and off ball pest. Like, there's no alphabetical order here. There is actually none. There's no order. Like, can, if there is an order, I would love somebody to tell me. Because I have literally spent, I've, I've literally, I've written all of them down based on, like, put dashes on what type of badges they are. I can't find any correlation as to why they are. It reminds me of, do you guys play, did you guys play the very first SmackDown game on the PS1 when their entire roster was just wrestlers in random order? There was no order to it. There was no alphabetical order. There was absolutely nothing. It was just referees and, or um, wrestlers in random order. That's what this game reminds me of. This is just a random order. Like we have a couple in a row that like look like, okay, maybe there is some reasoning to it because we got a whole bunch of defense badges. I was trying to put in any theory and I couldn't. I could not even think of a theory. Couldn't think of anything that make that this make uh, that would make this make sense. It because it doesn't. This does not make sense, lads. I'm telling you, this does not make sense. So, yeah. Anyway, mini rant over. But I'm I'm just baffled at that. Then we are on to number two. Why are there no good small forwards? And you guys might be saying, oh, Mick, there are a lot, or DVD, there are a lot of 2K, or there are a lot of good small forwards in the game. Are there? Are there? Because there's not. There is not any good small forwards in the game. Let's have a look at small forwards color Galaxy Opal. You got four, or five, and none of them are good. Not one of these cards is good. And I've said it in so many videos, I'm sounding like a broken record, but why are there no good small forwards? Like back in January, we got a couple of good ones. We got a couple of good ones for their time, but they're still outdated. Like if you're looking, like you can legitimately argue that a card from January is the best small forward in the game. So we're looking players, all players on 2KDB, small forwards. Pierce Iguodala, Shremf. Shremf is the best on next gen, it's not even close. Cedric Maxwell, probably, he's probably the best, but like, he does not very good. Lou Hudson's awful. Page is meh. Jimmy's meh. Ubre's meh. Wiggins is good. It's between Wiggins, Terry Dishinger, who came out in January, 
and Cedric Maxwell for the best small forward. The position's garbage. It is garbage. Like, if you're looking at two guards, like, one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm going to say Red's better than all of them. Seven. Mullen's definitely better than all of them. Mullen's a beast. Eight. Sloan's better. Nine. Ingram's... Kawhi's better. Ten. Navarro, I'm going to say, is better. Eleven. This T-Mac is better. Twelve. Clyde, 13, probably. Clyde's maybe better. I think I prefer him to max up, but it's close. And in next gen, Bowen's better than them all. Like, there are literally, like, ten two guards better. And the problem is that all the good small forwards in the world, all of them, none of them can play small forward. Like, the best small forwards of all in the NBA right now are Jason Tatum, Paul George, LeBron James, all power forwards. Andre Kurilenko, I mean, he kind you could argue he played the four. He played the four slash three. Like, with those really good, he had, I think, his best individual seasons of power forward. But long hair Andre Kurilenko, which is this picture here, was with those Utah Jazz teams where he was playing at the three. Boozer was at the four. Mehmet Okor was at the five. So he was a small forward. Um, I'm trying to think just how many of these guys are out of position. Larry Bird was definitely a small forward. Mikhail, unless, apart from when Mikhail was six man, maybe. Um, Mikhail and Parrish, the four and five. Obviously, Paul George, small forward. Kevin Durant is a small forward. Um, I don't know Richard Duma. OG Ananobi, you can debate. Lamar Odom was definitely a small forward. He handled the ball, he was definitely a small forward. Carmelo Anthony was definitely a small forward. So, like... So many of these guys are small forwards, and they just made them power forward. So, and it just doesn't make any sense. Why? Like, what's what do you have against the small forward position, 2K? What do you have against it? Because they're all garbage. So, um, next, why are triple tread offline cards the best cards in the game? Just like why? Like, I get it. I get it. Um, making some of the free cards good, but like, the triple tread online versus offline rewards are like scary. How much better? Triple Chat offline rewards are than Triple Chat online. Like, we have never, I personally believe we've never had any reward that was better at, at any given time. We've never had a better reward for playing offline than online than offline. So these are the online rewards. Of all of them, none of these are great. So you look at the start of them. First season, we had Terrell Brown and Sven Nader, both garbage men. Then we had Brian Winters for offline, which is good. They've been I mean, better than those guys. Not good, though. Then we had um, Buck Williams, who was like better Bill, better Diamond Bill Russell at the time, and um, Chuck Person. Both of those cards were fine. Compared to Tyreek Evans and Darryl Griffith. This is the only time you could argue maybe online was better, but I'm still taking Buck and Chuck Person over these two guys. The only problem with Buck is that he couldn't shoot. Then for Triple Trash online, we had Terry Cummings and... Um, Antoine Walker while in online we had Jeff Malone and Wayne Embry Wayne Embry is the best center in the game and Jeff Malone was a, is a 6 foot 4 Tracy McGrady clown and at the time we didn't have a good team in the game so he was a beast so we had a really good 6 foot 4 Tracy McGrady clown the best center in the game whereas we had Terry Cummings and Antoine Walker who sucked actually Walker was alright then we had Larry Nance versus Byron Beck Beck was quite significantly better yes he needed to badge him up but he was Probably the best power forward in the game when he came out. And then, like, we had Terry Dishinger. And yes, Jack Maron was great. Terry Dishinger was the best card in the game. Like, he was still one of the best cards in the game coming up to 250k. And 250k was like a month after this card came out and he was still one of the best. Then, it was Don Ol versus Fred Brown. Don Ol, both same height. Don Ol just a million times better. After that, was Kermit Washington versus... Spencer Haywood, Kermit, a million times better. We had Jerry Sloan versus Julius Randle. If you're on current gen, you know what? That's the one one time you can argue. Maybe, maybe online was better. But if you're on next gen, Jerry Sloan still arguably the top 2-2 two -two guy in the game. And then Danny Ferry versus Ron Harper. As much as I think Ron Harper is meh, Danny Ferry is the best card in the game if you're on next 
he's, if you put gold blinders on him, he's the best player in the game on next gen. So like the triple threat online rewards, we have seen Terry Dishinger, who was the best card in the game when he came out. And whatever, if you want to argue some guys have come recently that are better than Danny Ferry, you know what, like make all your arguments. But for me, Danny Ferry's number one. Danny Ferry is the best player in the game. Again, I've come up against the wheels of the world. I've come up against everybody and Danny Ferry is still the guy that is going to do the most damage. Can Curry on current gen, but on next gen, in my opinion, the best card in the game. Jerry Sloan, one of the best next gen two guards in the game. He's like a better Pete Maravich, but he can play at the, uh, at the but he can't play at the one. And well, a very similar Pete Maravich, but he can't play at the one. Then Don O was the arguably best point guard in the game when he came out. Um, he would have been running some guys to, in people's 250 squads if people were willing to grind triple threat offline, but no one was doing that on a one day basis. Actually, no, sorry, Luca came out the same day as Don O. He's arguably the second best point guard in the game that he came out. Kermit Washington was arguably the, a way better Giannis. He was probably the best 3 and D card. The triple threat offline rewards have been god tier. They have all been god tier here lads um and i i can't i can't remember the last time there was a bad one like sloan ferry oh kermit um terry beck embry malone chuck person buck williams there's not like dave bing dave bing was bad that was that's it that's the only one dave bing who came out in october or maybe even september he's the only bad one we've had all year unbelievably crazy how good these rewards are. And they're some of the best cards in the game. And at number four, I'm just confused with this one. I'm just confused at this one. Like, I guess, I get what 2K were doing. I I actually really, really like what they've done with this um, agenda reward, the 150K XP for using the gold key guard or, or the key guard um something about the key guard and basing it around like a certain card to get the 150k xp especially because this jr smith and i like it this season because this jr smith is by no means the greatest card in the game like will he be my point guard when i get him yes will he be a guy that's usable at the end of the game yes is he gonna be is he the best point guard in the game right now no is he top three probably not but um i like the fact that there is a different there's like a mystery way of doing it but why why Ty Lu? Like, why? Like, why is the most important player in the history of the game, Ty Lu? And I get it. I get it. You can ask the same, why the hell is Terry Dishinger the best player in NBA history? In his, or, or the best player in the game when he came out. But, like, at least with Terry Dishinger, you look back. Actually, to be fair, you can ask the same thing with Danny Ferry. Like, what the hell is Danny Ferry doing as the best player in the game? But still, we've all, we've all asked those questions about the triple threat offline guys. We've all been asking them. But nobody is asking the real cutting edge questions. Why Ty Lu? Why? Like, surely they should have put in a gold JR Smith or something. And if you used a gold JR, why Ty Lu? What link does Tyron Lu have to this? That is the most confusing thing. That is the real mystery. Why did they pick gold Ty Lu and make a link to 150,000 XP? Just why? What is what? Why is this the most special card in my team? Why is this the most relevant card in the history of well, in the history of 2K21 so far? Why Tyron Lu? And if there's one, if there is one mystery that I want the answer for by the end of the year, it's this. And even if the answer is we just picked them randomly, I'll take that. I will gladly, gladly take 2K saying we just picked them randomly because it will stop my confusion because I have legitimately been spending these last few weeks. Obviously, we've been hunting locker codes doing a bunch of things, but always in the back of my head, I always have to think, why Tyron Lou? So, um, yeah, now we are going to get on to it. The final one. What the hell are they doing with Jason Tatum? Like, it says collect 4,000 cards. I had someone message me and they said if 2K release 150 new cards every single month between now and the end of the game, nobody will get Jason Tatum. That is how, like there are, as far as I'm aware, there are only like 3,200 total cards in the game. And the fact is, is that 
if we don't see at the start of next like this season was the perfect time for current series three or 21 season series two like 21 current nba series two like that was the perfect perfect time because 2k are not going to release 150 cards unless unless jason tatum is the completionist reward every card from start to finish of the game so that means people only get them in august like as much as i hate to say it somebody should have got jason tatum already i like his 107 release keep him the ones that, keep the same six as he has on his opal card but jason tatum's 99 every stat dark matter card should be out either already or by the end of the month we all had the anthony like not we all i never got him but we all saw plenty of people with the Anthony Davis this time last year. He was available in March. The Yanis card in 2K19 was available in March. Because the whole thing with these collector cards is that there should be five, 600 more than the max collector, in my opinion. Because there's a lot of cards that become ultra extinct. Like, again, we've all seen it that if you go into these season tip offs, let me just check this Bradley Beal. Okay, there's a whole bunch of him. But when I made a video on these cards, he was genuinely extinct. Like, there's only four of these cards. You're going to be seeing a bunch of these cards going almost extinct now um, when it's coming close to the end. And the thing is that no one's even close. Like, even if 2K, even if 2K releases 450 random current cards, do you, you genuinely, genuinely, as far as I'm aware, there's there will only be 4,100 total cards. You genuinely have to get within 100 total cards if they do that. If not we won't we may not see this card till august again 2k might release a whole bunch of different things 2k might go and release 100 new basketballs to collect stuff like that i don't know what they're gonna do but they kind of fum not even they fumbled the bag with it nobody cares like by the time by the time people get this jason tatum card nobody's gonna care because this card will probably come out around the time 2k starts bringing out like goat-esque cards and i don't necessarily mean goat cards i mean goat-esque cards they're going to make squads um where is it where's danny ferry they're going to bring out guys that are like say instead of 95 and then a bunch of like high 80 stats we are going to see like 97 everything on defense 97 rebounding like 95 plus and everything we're going to see those occasional cards by may we'll see those cards i'm telling you by may we will see some of those cards and i can guarantee you nobody's getting this card by the start of may and by the time he's available he's going to be outdated a little bit like dame dame wasn't good the day dame was good for maybe a day like i didn't even think he was that good when he came out i used him he was meh at the start of season uh four he came out and then within about two weeks of season four starting, he was just kind of outclassed. Like we had so many decent cards. And um, we had so many guys, the point guard position. Like Wade was better, Peyton was better, and he wasn't even in the debate with those guys. You could argue that Baron Davis was better than them. Um, I don't think so, but you could argue it. I think that's going to be the case with Tatum. I just don't think anyone really cares anymore. I think there are about five guys in the world that are going for first Tatum. Whereas for first Giannis or first AD, there were maybe 100. I think 2K have set this goal, have made this goal so long term. And have just put so many cards in the game that I don't think any. I don't think anyone bar a very select few. Like for Anthony Davis last year, I reckon, of the hardcore players that would play this game let's say five days plus a week maybe 10 percent of those got anthony davis or went for anthony davis he was doable and this is by the end of the year maybe 10 percent of those actually no i'm, I'm being way too generous there maybe two percent went for anthony davis of the guys that play this game five five times plus a week of the hard course but this year i reckon 0.00001 percent i reckon five of the tens of thousands that play this game um Hard, like our, our hardcore players so yeah that is pretty much it these are five things i do not understand why badges aren't in alphabetical order why there are no good small forwards 
Why triple tread offline rewards are just god tier for some reason. They're the best cards in the game. Why Tyron Lu and why they how they completely fumbled the bag with Tatum? Like collector level rewards have been in the game since 2K. I'm not gonna count 14 because they're collecting specific cards. It's 2K 15 and somehow they fumbled the bag six years later. So yeah, that's pretty much it. That's the video. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe.